Welcome back, it is Context Menus Part 3. We're going to be going over the logics functionality that was added a little bit earlier than I expected, but that's totally fine. I'm excited for it. Before we go into that though, I do want to cover the stuff which is in the bottom left and bottom right of my uh, video now. This is the brand new uh, control overlay uh, icon stuff, which I was mentioning in my channel update one. I'll link that in the video description so you can take a look there. Uh, this just shows you what I'm pushing. It does the uh, operations on both sides. So if I do left actions or right actions, you'll see left and right actions. Uh, order from top to bottom is primary, secondary, grab, context menu. If you're not sure what those mean, uh, go back, look at some other tutorials, check the channel update one or check the MPC or even the um, dash, which has those uh, control options in you. I won't go over them because I'll have to go over them every video if I do that. Uh, just take a look and uh, you'll soon get used to it. I will be, of course, still saying what I'm doing in some cases, but just in case I forget, or you need some extra reassurance, they're there. Please do give me feedback on these. I'm still working on them. Making UIX this small is uh, somewhat challenging. It's like it's very small. Like uh, I, I can see them here floating in front of me. They are like I don't know, like a fingernail with um, sort of uh, a tie, etc. Let's get going. I'm going to start with some examples, and then I'm going to show you how to build them, and also talk about some sort of general specifics about what to do and what to avoid. Let's go ahead. So the first one on the left here I have is a uh, piece of text, and you can see this piece of text here is uh, just saying dash dash dash. This is common for custom nameplates, they just show dash 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 when no one's looking at them. If I go ahead and grab this, you'll see that I've added a context main that says who am I, and if I push on this, updates to Probable Prime. There you go, let's go ahead and build that one. Okay, uh, if you've done in other videos, there'll be chapters below that sort of allow you to skip around. If you're not interested in this particular thing, skip to the next one. We've got uh, a ball, a box, and many others. Let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, box, uh, sorry, the text here. So to this we'll need a piece of text, so with my developer tooltip here I'm going to go to create new uh, text basic, that will get us a basic text. I'm going to go ahead and inspect that by aiming my uh, developer tooltip and hitting secondary, you can see that on the right there for now, and then open inspector. Here at the top here you can see basic, let's push the star button to make a basic child, people loved that quote before so we'll do it again, and we'll rename this to context. It's very, very important to name your context menu slots. You'll get confused if you don't. So context menu. And then in this context menu, we're going to go ahead and add those components from part one and two. Uh, so you should be familiar with them, but if not, just follow along. Radiant UI context menus, root context menu item, and then attach component, radiant UI context menu, context menu item source. Drag context menu item source into the item here. And we're going to be naming this who am I and we'll leave everything else as default. Who am I? Add a question mark there on the end. There we go. That's who am I? Cool. So that's all we actually need to do for this context menu. If you open up, if you grab it and open up the context menu here, you'll see that we have who am I and it does nothing right now. Let's make it do something. Instead of using components though, we're going to go ahead and use logic. So go ahead, grab your logics tooltip. Go ahead and grab where it says context menu item source, grab it, and then push secondary in the world and it will appear. If that doesn't happen, go ahead and make sure that this is on extract interface. And a lot of people that have got that stuck on extract uh, or whatever uh, before, there's a drive node and reference node extract interface. You'll see things might have changed here a little bit from the previous videos, that's going to happen from time to time. Just ignore anything that uh, was in the previous videos that isn't in this video and anything new I'm going to hopefully explain. So here's a context menu item source in the world in Logix, and we're going to go ahead and get an event when an item on there is pressed. So to do that, go to Node Browser, go to Interaction, Button Events. I'll link in the video description a video about button events. Button Events is the best node ever. If you don't use it in terms of buttons, I will send you angry kittens in the uh, in Discord. But uh, well, there's plenty of videos below where I can sort of take a look at uh, showing you how that works. So with Button Events in the world, what you can do here is you can go ahead and connect up Context Menu Item Source to the input of Button Events, and everything will work. And you've now converted a context menu item from component land into logics land. If I go ahead and pull out the top ribbon of pressed and hit secondary, you'll now see that we've got a uh, display node for this impulse. And now if I go ahead and grab this piece of text and then hit who am I, you'll see that we get an impulse at the top there. And that's all we really need to start doing logics with uh, context menus. I'm now going to illustrate again. I do this in a video called sort of how to know who pushes a button, but I'm going to illustrate it in this way as well, which is to know how pu who pushed that uh, context menu item. So for that we're going to need a few nodes. We're going to go back and we're going to go to users and then a local user. Because once again this uh, impulse out here comes from the, the user that pushed the button, in this case the context menu. Local user is the person who pushed it, so we can go ahead and use a local user. So if local user spawned in the world, we then need a user username which is also in the users folder. And now we've got the username of the person who pushed the button, or in this case, the context menu. Now we just need to write that to the piece of text. Let's go ahead and get that sorted. We'll select basic at the top here, grab text renderer, 
push secondary in the world, and then we've got the text renderers interface card. And then we'll go back up to the root of the, of the node menu, go to actions, go to write, and spawn that in the world. And then we just need to connect things up. So pink output of uh, uh, the write goes into text. Uh, the pressed goes into the top of write. The user username goes into the bottom of write, and we're done. Go to the left here, grab this piece of text, which currently says text, hit the context menu, and then who am I? And you'll now say it says probable prime. Done. That's all there really is to it with the button events um, node and button events and the context menu item source. But I did want to provide some other examples just to sort of get your, your brain thinking about the ideas of what you can now do because they're available in uh, component land and in logics land. Let's go ahead and tidy this up though. So I'm going to go back to basic, hit star to create another basic child. I'll name this logics. Grab logics, set packing root, hold secondary and let go. We can get rid of this, it's not needed anymore, and we're done. Now I know that this one isn't interesting because it's just me in the world, but if you spawn it out in another world with lots of other people in it, they can all grab it and go, who am I, and it'll show their name. Maybe try doing that with some of the other usernames. There's things like uh, FPS or time or all sorts of stuff in there that you could do that might be sort of interesting to do to learn these context menu operations. So that's the first one done. I'll move it to the left here. This next one's a little bit of fun. Uh, so it's a sphere. I did think about making it a little bit more visually accurate, but then I have to explain how I did that in the video. So we'll go ahead and leave it as a sphere. With the sphere grabbed, if I open up the context menu here, I can go to my item. And then we've got up, down, left, right. And you'll see, oh, what does that do? Well, I'm going to go ahead and hit up. And you'll notice that my gravity is now swapped up. Let's go ahead and hit down again, and I'm back down to down. I'm going to go ahead and hit left. And what that's going to do is align me to this wall. Should be forward and back there, but I got my coordinate um, coordinates mixed up. If we go ahead and hit right, I need to make sure that I'm lined up or I'm going to fall through the door. That'll do. I am on the wall there. And then I can hit down here, and I'm back there. So this one just uses one of the nodes from the, uh, from the node browser in a context menu item source. Let's go ahead and build this really quickly. I won't do all of the um, all of the operations there, up, down, left, right. We'll just do one. We'll do up, so you can go up to the ceiling. So we're going to go ahead and go to create new 3D model sphere. Once we've got a sphere, I'm going to go ahead and shrink that down. Whoops, need to switch that to tip. Shrink this down a little bit. Inspect it with secondary. Open inspector. Hit star to create a sphere child in this case. Name it context menu. And then go ahead and add those components again. So attach component radiant UI context menu uh, root context menu item. Attach component uh, radiant UI context menu context menu item source. We won't create a sub menu for this. We'll just do uh, you know one there. Um, and uh, actually, I will have to duplicate it because then we can, we'll get stuck on the ceiling otherwise. But we'll just do two at the root level. It's totally fine. So we'll name this one up. And then we're going to go ahead and switch to our logic tip here, grab context menu item source, turn to the right here, hit secondary, we've got that interface again, open up the node browser here, I'm going to need some nodes, first thing we'll need is local user again, so we'll go to the users folder and look for local user, spawn that in the world, we'll go back to the root here, then we go to physics, and then we'll need just a few from physics, we'll need find character controller, and we'll need set character gravity. So these, they kind of just link up together. I know that this is green to start. There's actually a, a, what's called an overload when you connect local user to find character controller. It just turns into a, a user find character controller. Plug that one into set character gravity. For the input of character gravity, we need this to be 9.81. Uh, for those who are unaware, um, gravity in uh, NEOS and in the real world actually is uh, 9.81 meters per second. And so 9.81 meters per second is um, Actually, in this case, it's up because uh, uh, y um, going up is, is increasing and y going down is, is, is negative. So here, 9.81 will send us up. Let's go back and let's go to interaction button events. Connect in context menu item source. Connect press to set character gravity. And we're done. We can now go up. I'm going to quickly pack this away, though, and duplicate it so we can go down as well. And then uh, we'll be good. So I'm going to go ahead and grab context menu here. Hit set packing root. Hold secondary on these, they're packed away. I'm going ahead and hit duplicate. And I'm going to do a trick here, which not many people know, which is when the logics is packed, if you can find what you're looking for, in this case, I'm looking for this float three, I can edit without unpacking. So here I'm going to change the 9.81 to a negative 9.81, and I don't even need to unpack it. Go back to context menu here, change this to down, and there we go. So I'm going to delete this interface card and then switch 
to no tools. Grab this sphere, and we're going to go up, and now you'll see we're on the ceiling, and I can hit down, and we're back on the floor. So try that out. It's a little bit of fun. Please don't uh, mess with Tabeel's gravities without their consent. Uh, it can be quite dizzying. It might have been dizzy earlier in the video while I was jumping around. But I did want to show you the uh, affordability that happens when you're able to sort of use any any logics node available to you. Now, if there's a logics node which takes an impulse, you can call it using those uh, those nodes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the final example I have here, which is a sort of poor person's um, multi-tool. I want to call it a full multi-tool because that uses it as a component. I haven't gone over that yet um, as I don't really use them. Uh, do let me know if that's something you'd like to see though. But this is sort of an example of maybe controlling a multi-tool or maybe controlling sort of an arsenal of weapons with just sort of a few nodes here. So I have a cube here and to the right of a cube I've got a logic uh, developer tooltip even. If I grab this cube I can go ahead and hit tools and then I can hit dev and you'll see that I get a dev tip jumped to my hand. So I'm going to go ahead and unequip that so it won't break and we'll make that really quickly. With the developer tooltip equipped I'm going to go to create new 3D model box, shrink down the box a little bit, hit secondary, open inspector, start, create a box child, name this context menu. I know naming it may seem redundant but if you don't do it, I keep spelling context menus wrong as well, then you're going to get to the point where, like I was yesterday, I had like four of these items in my root of my avatar when I was making my avatar's context menu and I just didn't know what was going on. So again, at the top here, attach uh, uh, radiant UI, context menu, root context menu item. Again here I won't do a sub menu, just for speed. Attach component, radiant UI, context menu, context menu item source, drag context item menu item source into the item there, rename the item to dev and then we'll just need those nodes again so I'm grabbing switching to my logics tip context menu item source secondary button events is already selected but I'll show you where it is so interaction button events we go back uh, and this time we need to go to tools and we'll need equip tooltip and here we need pressed Put that into the top here. We will need a user, so we'll go back and get that. That's in users local user. Equip tooltip takes a side, just uh, pull out a ribbon here and hit secondary, and then just specify the side you want. I'm going to specify right. You might be able to sort of figure out where the context menu is based on when it was open, but for this purpose, we'll just use right here. It will need a tooltip, so let's go ahead and grab one. I'm just going to spawn one from uh, yes, essentials, uh, essential tools, even. Uh, here's developer tooltip. Cool. I'll put that there. Then we just need to inspect the tooltip, which I know is a little bit meta, but we're going to make that with secondary. Open inspector. Jump to the top. Select new as developer tool, which we need to go one higher. Select dev tooltip. Grab dev tooltip. Secondary. So it's spawn upside down. That checks that the tooltip's upside down. Drag the top of dev tooltip into tooltip. Close that out, and we're done. If I go ahead and grab this cube, I can then do dev and you'll see that the uh, tooltip jumps to my hand here. Uh, pack that new way is, again, quite easy. We're going to go up to the top of the box. Hit star. Name this logics. Grab logics. Set packing root. Hold secondary. Delete the interface cards. And you're done. You've got a sort of really basic poor man's, uh, poor person's uh, multi-tool there. That's about all just for the logics nodes. I do want to reiterate, if a logics node has an impulse, so let's go ahead and take a look at more, I don't know, set local rotation as a random one. It's got an impulse. That means you can use it using context menus now. I'm not sure what you'd do with that, but there you go. You're free to experiment and see what's going on. Do you want to cover one more node? It's quite a simple node. I'm going to go ahead and uh, find the one that's easiest to show because it doesn't do anything crazy, which is the name one here, just to sort of cheat and get those components back that I need. You will see, and I'll go over this in part four. Part four is just going to be a sort of tidying up tutorial. But you'll see in the context menu here, there's now a new checkbox here called close menu on press. That doesn't happen by default. So you'll see here if I grab uh, the uh, probable prime text here and I go to who am I, you'll see it leaves that context menu item open. If I want to close it as the part of my logics, I can do that using a new node. You see here I write the name, and then after writing the name, I can just go to the node browser and I can go to interaction and I can just call close context menu like that. Pack that back up and now you'll see 
who am I, or close the context menu. You can also do that with the checkbox here, it's just up to you what do you want to do based on uh, logics versus components. There is a second input to uh, the close comp uh, context menu item. I'm not entirely sure how to use it. It's something to do with who caused the context menu to be opened, but I couldn't really find a use case for it at the moment. If you do know if this is a use case, let me know. I'm happy to do an amendum. Like I said, there's uh, always going to be follow-up videos to this sort of stuff as new functionality is added. Speaking of that, I'll be uh, heading off here and seeing you in part four. In part four, we'll be going over uh, just tidying up stuff. It'll be things like how to do submenus, nested submenus. I know some people got confused about that. How to make context menus sort of somewhat private. And what I mean by that is I've had some questions about sort of how to make it so that if for whatever reason, you know, you're parented to someone else, maybe the, the grepper tooltip or the, you know, various other ways you can sort of be a part of someone's avatar or grab hold of them, that the um, uh, context menu for that user won't appear just in case it's anything that, you know, only you should be able to control. So I'll show you how to do that and how to do nested some, uh, context menus and cover some of these checkboxes here that I haven't covered before. That's all there is to it. I will see you next time. Let me know what you think of those uh, visuals in the bottom left and bottom right. I'll speak to you later. Bye-bye.